I am a massive fan of the content creator, Mike Rowe. Mike Rowe, many of you know him from Deadliest Catch, where they're uh, in the Bering Sea uh, fishing for uh, snow crab, and he narrates the whole thing. Dirty Jobs, it was on 10 years or something like that, I think it's coming back, where he walks through you know, the work that people do behind the scenes that make the whole world work. Also, um, pardon, uh, no, it's not part of the interruption. <laughs> that's from Sports Hill. That's from uh, uh, ESPN. Um, returning the Favor, also, uh, he has a, sh a podcast out that's called uh, The Way I Heard It. It's kind of a spinoff of Paul Harvey. You know, Mike just has a way about him. He understands, you know, the common person and what makes sense, you know, and he, he really is on a mission to value the uh, industrial arts, industrial arts, and uh, that is like being a mechanic, electrician, plumber, steam fitter, welder, machinist, tool and die operator, whatever it, it may be. But this country right now, and I'm talking about the United States, and I know they have this problem in other countries, I, I hear the same stories, is we got 6.6 .6 million unfulfilled jobs for people that are have these skills. But at the same time, in high schools, we're pushing all of our kids towards college. It's the answer for everyone. You know, when they're going out and they're spending eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year getting a degree in psychology, get a forty thousand dollar a year job. We need those people in the forty thousand dollar making those jobs. Uh, I mean, doing psychology or whatever it happens to be. But uh, you don't need a $400,000 loan to go along with that. Uh, there's other options for you. So Mike is pushing this option, you know, not saying you have to go into the industrial arts, but at least consider the industrial arts. Often you can serve an apprenticeship, you know, of, of three, four, five years. Sometimes it's even, you know, 10 weeks. Get a specialty, do underwater welding or something exciting and cool like that. Easily, these folks are making $100,000 a year. And if you want to own your own business, get a team of people working for you, you can make a lot more money than that. So that's kind of Mike Rowe. I'm a groupie. <laughs> I admit that. His, uh, his podcast where he talks about the way I heard it, you know, he just talks about how famous people that you know, you know, like John Wayne, how did he get to be John Wayne and what's his backstory? And it's just super cool. Um, you know, he's got their, they're like hour long pod, podcast, uh, that he has. So huge fan of his. Okay. Bring this back to reliability and maintenance for me. I think Mike solves half the problem. Half the problem is the stigma, the parents, how this, how society treats, you know, the industrial arts. The other half is how we as leaders, the, the ones that own the businesses, you know, we're the maintenance manager, we're the plant manager, we're the vice president of a company, and how we treat these people. Do we treat them as just a two pair of hands, or do we treat them as professionals? Do we treat them as people that can solve problems, that can innovate, that can be creative, figure out new ways of doing things? To me, that there's an enormous responsibility on us as leaders to treat people better just to treat it better. Uh, you shouldn't be doing that anyway. But to utilize this resource, both to the maximum gain for them and for the, the company and the result you're trying to get. I don't think that's evil for companies to try to be successful, but we're mismanaging this resource poorly, mismanaging it daily, okay? Um, so, you know, what do I mean by this? This is means, you know, sitting down and, and having teams of how do we get better, more efficient, right tools for the job? What new training do we need? How do we do work differently? Remove waste, remove fr frustration, coordination between groups, all those things that, that we can do. I think Mike addresses half of this problem. The other half is how we're doing it. I was talking with one company yesterday and they said, hey, we're gonna, we have to ramp up and make our processes more efficient around hiring people because we're hiring four or five times the number of craft people that we have in the past. And, and I said, well, what are you doing around retention? And, and there was silence. What are, you, what are you doing around retention? 
you know, what are you doing around treating the people differently, uh, treating them like a precious resource, and, and it was nothing. Uh, most of my channel, most of my videos here, I'm talking about how efficiently do you use people. You know, uh, I, I go into organizations, very common to have 10 to 15% wrench time. And these plants say, we would love to do this reliability stuff, but we don't have enough people and we don't have enough money. And if they do listen to me and I do get a chance to come into their site very briefly, under a week, they realize that really we don't need that much money. We could pay as we go. May not need any money uh, up front. And we're going to have too many people here pretty quickly because when you go from 10, 15 percent wrench time to 30 percent wrench time, not creating a sweatshop, just eliminate the stupid things you're doing that you don't know you're doing. All of a sudden you have twice the number of people and then you can have problem solving teams. You can send people off to training and you can bring people up to a higher and higher level of contribution. But um, I guess the reason for today's video is Mike Rowe is out there on himself, by himself. He's the champion of this cause for the industrial arts. And folks, he's only half the solution, in my opinion, half the solution. The other half is how we in industry treat our industrial arts people. Do we treat them as a precious resource that we don't want to lose, that we want to tap into their, that not only their hands, but their heart and, and their head, uh, all three H's, head, heart, hands, um, into making everybody successful. And this is just so critical um, to, I, I think, to the, our economy is having these skilled jobs filled you know, not only filled, but look at that, how that impacts people, you know, getting a hundred thousand, hundred twenty thousand dollar a year job because you got a skill, because you're one of the top 10% in your field as being an industrial arts, what kind of families do you have? What kind of communities do you live in? What kind of donations do you make? I think it makes the overall the world a better place. This is Joe out.